Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond the Feet. In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Brooks Stability Range. So you got your Ravenna, your Adrenaline, your Transcend, your Addiction, as well as your Beast or your Aerial when it comes to the women's range. We're gonna narrow this down and pick out the shoes that will work for you the best. To show the differences in the stability systems. Uh, your four of these are using a guide rail system, then your Addiction is just using that dual density posting, uh, just a traditional way to do it. The first off, who are these shoes for? These are kind of that happy medium uh, as far as kind of some of the lower range as far as the stability system goes. So if you do slightly supinate, they can actually work for you as well. Uh, but these are kind of targeted at the pronation. So if you do mildly or severely pronate, uh, these will work great for you. The guide rail system isn't too aggressive uh, when it comes to kind of locking down the feet. Uh, they more so act as a holistic support and more targeting towards your knee. So as the foot rolls too far to the inside, our medial bumper nudges it back to the center. Or if it rolls too far to the lateral side or the outside, it will nudge it back to the center. And therefore the guide rails are working together with the foot as you go through your stride to keep the knee in its preferred motion. You are still able to have a slight bit of flexion in your foot and it doesn't lock it up too much. Uh, if you are looking at these, that is quite a bit more stable than these other few, uh, but it is a very good stability system, but these aren't really made if, for someone that does severely pronate. If you do kind of mildly or just pronate, uh, these are built for you quite well. Before we kind of jump into the kind of running shoes for everyone, we'll jump into the kind of shoes made for that bigger foot, that bigger person, and it offers quite a bit more stability uh, on both sides. So your traditional way to do stability is just you do dual density on that medial side, uh, and these addictions do run with quite a straight last, and they're quite broad throughout the midfoot as well as the forefoot. They offer a U heel counter, so it does accommodate quite a wide heel as well, whereas uh, your kind of other three here are using that v-shape yeah very very stable shoe uh, i wouldn't really consider this a runner it's more of a glorified walking shoe for uh, someone that's got kind of arthritic feet or very hypermobile feet if you do run in this uh, i'd probably suggest looking at the other three since they'll work a bit better a bit lighter getting into fitness and just feel like you're getting quite a bit too much movement around in the shoes that you can't currently in you want something that fits quite broad as well as through the midfoot and your forefoot uh, the addiction does work quite well they just do have a very firm cushioning system uh, that doesn't give much bounce back as far as running goes uh, but it is very stable that's probably the only thing the addiction has going for it is just the fit is good for a wider foot but it is very stable when it comes to a stability system and if you do have quite a low arch that dual density on the medial side can kind of dig in uh, but some people love this shoe and it is made for them, but the majority of the pronators this just will be too stable and it can dig in. Moving on to your Beast 20, so we have done a more in-depth review of this shoe itself. They're using the guide rail system, so if you do even have a kind of hypermobile foot either way, so you do sometimes supinate and pronate, uh, this just guides you quite nicely. It is built for someone that does have quite a wide foot the whole way through, so accommodates that U heel counter, as well as quite broad through that midfoot area, as well as your forefoot. So if you've got quite a flat arch, uh, even a medium height arch, this will accommodate it quite nicely. Looking at your midfoot itself, uh, it's quite broad there, and it doesn't really taper off too much in that midfoot. It's not gonna irritate you on that medial side, and with that guide rails, it's just gonna kinda keep your position central in the shoe. There's not really any torsion at all when it comes to the flexibility throughout this shoe. Very nice upper. Uh, they've taken a lot of weight out of this compared to the 18s. Uh, it's nicely dialed in, does run with a detached tongue, uh, but they do have two uh, eyelets there on the tongue to keep it in place. Very nice air flowing uh, two piece upper and you've got a nice round toe box. So if you do have quite a broad foot, this does accommodate very well for hypermobile broad feet. And if you do have a high instep as well with that uh, detached tongue, uh, you can easily offer you that quite a high instep there, but yeah. Very nicely dialed in shoe. Durability wise, if you are quite a heavier person and just kind of doing that couch to 5K, couch, couch to half marathon, uh, these are gonna hold up to a ton of Ks as well with just what's underneath your foot. Uh, the Biomogo that they do use here uh, is quite durable when it comes to a cushioning system, plus just the rubber that Brooks do use. Uh, you kind of got your different rubbers on the outside just to add a bit more traction and just durability. Uh, slightly bit less flex grooves on the forefooty beast just to stop that sl slight bit of forefoot pronation, but yeah. Very good, very well built shoe. This is more of a runner than the Beast 18. Uh, it's a lot lighter and it's just a very good shoe uh, when it comes to the, the broad stability shoes, especially if someone that is quite 
hypermobile and has a tendency to kind of roll either way. My pick between both of these shoes, uh, I'd definitely pick the Beast. Uh, I've had to use this as running or even just a walking shoe. With the addictions, I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of got rid of this shoe. It's kind of sitting just in a void. They've just got so many stability shoes at the moment that I could easily see this go uh, and they probably wouldn't lose too many sales. A lot of people could just transition up to the B-Star or even transition down to the Transcend, which is just, yeah, they're both just much better shoes when it comes to a stability shoe. Plus just the weight and the cushioning systems in them yeah, will be fine as they are. So overall, as far as a stability running shoe goes, if you want to do a ton of Ks in them and want something a bit more pleasurable than both of these on your feet, I would look at the Transcend Adrenaline or the Ravenna. So these do have the same stability system in them. Uh, they do use guide rails both on the lateral as well as the medial side. Uh, and they are just different densities for the cushioning systems that are in the place. Let's kind of just start from the outsoles and work our way up from all these three. So with the outsoles, Brooks is probably one of the more durable brands. Uh, you've got a ton of rubber underneath all these. You've got a slight bit more flex screws in the Ravenna, just because they do use quite a bit more of a firmer, snappier, responsive midsole. Uh, just get a bit more flex screws in that forefoot, just to get you onto your next step a bit quicker. With both your Transcend as well as your Adrenaline, you've got a slight bit less flex screws on that mid your size of the forefoot just with the guide rails it incorporates that uh, instead of kind of forefoot pronating this just does guide you throughout the step quite nicely not too aggressive as far as the forefoot pronation goes but it guides you quite nicely with the adrenaline as well similar to the ghost it just does have that guidance line running on the lateral side as whereas well your transcend doesn't have much of a guidance line bit less flex screws in the forefoot so as far as the kind of stability aspects of the outsoles go not really a whole lot stable semi-stable whereas your transcend with the outsole is probably your most stable out of these three. Do use a green rubber uh, whereas you got your kind of carbon as well as airborne rubber in your adre adrenalines uh, and just kind of just some stock standard rubber in your Avenas. As far as durability goes, uh, as far as the outsoles are both kind of going to hold up to whatever you put of them. I'd probably say you're going to run, run about 800 to 1000 Ks uh, before you kind of need to replace any of those outsoles. Moving on to midsoles, so this is where kind of the stability as well as cushioning aspect comes into play. Transcend, very similar cushioning system to your Glycerin, whereas your Adrenaline matches up with your Ghost and I think the Ravenna matches up with the Pure Flow. Uh, but with your guide rails, so they do are built up on both the lateral and medial sides. There is quite a lot of lateral support on these shoes when it does come to a stability shoe. So most stability runners tend to kind of either heel strike or midfoot strike on that lateral side, then just kind of pronate inwards. Uh, so this is kind of just keeping you centralised. Can kind of with the guide rails kind of snap you back into a central gait, gait cycle and just get you onto that toe off easily. So they're not as aggressive as just having a dual density posting on the medial side. Brooks as well as Hoka I think are doing the better job when it comes to the stability systems on the market. Yeah, all these have very similar stability systems. They're going to kind of run true and very similar as far as stability goes. The main difference is kind of the cushioning system between these three. With your Transcend, they use a full DNA loft cushioning system. So if you are looking for that nice stable shoe and it's a plush, you're gonna sink into it a whole lot and it's not a whole lot of kind of bounce back, it's just kind of that nice daily training you can do a lot of Ks in. I'd pick up the Transcend, very pleasurable underneath the foot. And if you were to kind of train up for something uh, and just want something that's not gonna fatigue the body that much, uh, the Transcend will definitely do that. And just gonna, with the guide rails, it's just gonna keep you in that kind of central and kind of injury free. With your adrenaline, so they do use that DNA loft crash pad in the heel. So as I said before, people coming down on that lateral side of the heel, just offers that nice cushioning uh, just on landing. Uh, then they just use a full mate, full length Biomogo DNA cushioning system. So gives you that slight bit more bounce back. Uh, you do sink into it all right. With your Biomogo DNA, it is just gonna offer you that kind of bit more response. Your Adrenalines do run with a 12 mil offset where I'm pretty sure your Transcend as well as your Ravenna are running with a 10 mil. If you are looking for that slightly bit more responsive shoe with still being enough cushioned at the heel, this does work quite all right. Moving on to your Ravenna, this is just that lightweight trainer that you want to do kind of those tempo workouts in. If, if you are looking to build up into that half or full marathon, and just don't want your legs to get fatigued or kind of get out of whack over that time and just do a bit of pace, uh, your Ravenna will work great for that. So with your Ravenna's midsole, they just use a Biomogo DNA cushioning system the whole way through. So very similar to feel to the Adrenaline. It's just got, it doesn't have a thicker stack height and you don't have that crash pad of DNA locked in the heel. Uh, but yeah, nice and kind of snappy for those slightly faster runs. 
uh, you're not going to sink in it as much as compared to the Adrenaline or the Transcend. Built of that lighter weight stability shoe, so it's kind of in that niche category where there's not a whole lot of uh, lightweight stability shoes on the market, but this does kind of dial it in quite nicely, offering the same support as both these others. You just get a lighter running shoe as far as the stability shoe goes. As far as the cushioning system goes, you've got the softest in the Transcend using that DNA loft. You've got kind of your happy medium with your adrenaline. You've got the DNA loft in the heel as well as your Biomogo DNA underneath the foot and you just got your Biomogo DNA in the Ravenna. So that's just gonna act as a slightly lighter weight, bit more as a responsive cushioning system. With your uppers, they offer stability alongside the midsoles. With the Transcend, you got the 3D printing wrapped around the midfoot. Uh, so that just, once you get the shoe longer into the life of it, uh, the mesh does stretch a bit more than the 3D print will. So it just locks down that midfoot nicely over the length of the shoe. A uh, nice plush upper around the whole foot. Uh, you got a bit more breathability in the toe off and not a whole lot of cushioning in the midfoot area, just not locks you in quite nicely. Nice slim runners fit, so this is quite a shallow uh, forefoot as well as midfoot, so if you do have a low instep or medium instep, this will cater quite nicely for you. So you're not gonna kind of be slopping around in the shoe at all. And with your V heel counter, just gonna lock you in around that heel quite nicely. You're not gonna kind of slip out at all. Do accommodate that runner's knot as well, so you can easily lock lace that. Uh, if you want some bit more secure around that midfoot area. But very nice fit. Uh, this is probably, this as well as the Ravenna probably fits my foot the best being quite a low instep as well as a low arch. They just lock it in quite nicely and you're not, not getting that slippage to either side or kind of feeling instable in a stability shoe. With the Adrenaline, you've got a slight bit more cushioning around the upper, a bit more of a U shape, kind of that like UV shape heel counter. All these are running with a detached tongue, uh, but they, with Brooks, they have kind of got two eyelets on the tongue itself. And with your stability system, as far as the upper goes on your adrenaline, you got your 3D print on that medial side, uh, just kind of the two sections coming in there, and as well as around all your lacing, so it's just going to, not going to fatigue over the life of the shoe. Nice uh, breathable upper as well. These are pretty durable, and you do have your dorsiflexion protector on that, so if you do experience your toe coming through uh, the top of the shoes, these are just a bit more reinforced on your big toe there, so you won't get the shoe being a bit more breathable after you've about, done about 200 Ks in them. With the Ravenna, with being a light stability shoe, they have kind of made the upper a bit more simplistic. You don't have kind of any stability system aspect in the upper. You kind of got your Brooks logo coming in a slight bit there, so that may act as a slight bit of stability aspect. Nice lockdown on the heel, not a whole lot of cushioning compared to the other two that we just touched on. Uh, same thing with the detached tongue, it does have a nice uh, eyelet there, so it may kind of slide down to that lateral side a bit more compared to the other two. With the upper, it's just a nice breathable, very slim fit, uh, as well as your transcend slide a bit, probably a bit narrower. Fit on these are very nicely dialed in. Uh, pretty sure that multiple widths in both of these are, I think these come in D as well as a 2E. With your adrenaline, it probably comes in the most amount of widths. So with your men's, you've got a B, D, 2E, as well as a 4E. And in your women's, you've got a 2A, B, D, as well as a 2E. So very accommodating for basically any foot type. Uh, any kind of runner can run in the adrenaline. With very, very similar to the Ghost. Uh, the Ghost 13 did kind of update the lateral cushioning, uh, but compared to the Ghost 12, this is basically a very similar shoe. They just have a guide rail system on it. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of difference between that, but it, this is kind of a happy medium place as far as a stability shoe goes, or old stability shoe goes with dual density and a neutral shoe. So if you are wanting just something that's a nice, happy medium and fits that niche, uh, pick up your adrenaline. And your transcends just that, yeah, slightly bit softer, a bit more stable. Uh, if you do have that lower arch, it does have a slightly bit broader midfoot area uh, to accommodate that lower arch. So that's basically the majority of the Brooks stability range as far as their running shoes go. Uh, if you've got any questions or any things I didn't touch on, just let me know in the comments. I'll be willing to answer any of those questions. Uh, or even if you're kind of tossing up between any of these shoes or any of these shoes compared to any other stability shoes on the market, uh, let us know in the comments or uh, answer those questions for you. Anyways, if you've uh, gained any knowledge, give us one of those ones as well as hit the subscribe button, uh, turn on the bell and all that jargon, and we'll see you in another video. So these do have basically the same security system in them. Don't do that. Wouldn't pick that up yet. <laughs> you're all right? You're all right, yeah. So your adrenaline do run with a your adrenaline do run with a 12 mil. <laughs> that would look that would look funny. Uh, they kind of they kind of. You, you should have seen how many times you said kind of in the last video I posted. 
I cut it about oh, probably 20 of them. Yeah. And they were still done. <laughs> kind of. Well, they, they do. They do. They have. They, have. they will. <laughs> they are. <laughs>